Hey guys, it's Morgan. Welcome back to another weekly schlog here at Highland Cycles in Montrose, Colorado. Uh, this is our little weekly shop vlog or schlog where we show you all kinds of cool dirt bike stuff. Uh, we try to get them out on Mondays at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. That doesn't always happen, but we do, we do our best. It's at least close to that, and then sometimes we miss weeks because of racing and all that good stuff. But if you found us because of uh, bike build series or the KDX giveaway or something like that, uh, check this video out. This is what we do every week. Uh, I'm trying to show you the ins and outs of a uh, small independent motorcycle shop in um, Colorado. So, uh, yeah, that sounds like fun. Here we go. All right, guys. So first on the lift this week is this YZ450? 450F. Uh, we are making it street legal-ish, kind of, enough um, for Colorado. And we're also doing a valve adjustment because as we were working on it, we're doing a full service and checking the running of it and it starts right up when it's cold it's a little bit uh takes a few revolutions but then um uh it when it gets warm it takes even more revolutions to get going and since it's a button only no kickstarter we need to make sure this thing starts right away so uh i am pretty sure it's gonna be a valve situation it's either that or a fuel pump but i doubt it's a fuel pump since it seems to get worse when it gets warm generally a valve thing uh, and then we're gonna hang a headlight on it tail light on it um, yeah so anyway let's dig in we're gonna take the seat off the tank off which on these is kind of a pain in the butt but whatever the fuel injected uh, YZs the tanks kind of a pain to deal with but we get that out of the way which will also allow us to get into the wiring harness and set up what we need so it's awesome. Oh yeah, and there's uh, White Michael over there. Zach, look, Zach's enjoying this right now. Look at him over there. Oh, come on, focus. Focus on Zach's happy face. There he is. Look at there. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get after this YZ. What up, Buttercup? I'm good, dude. You're going old school. You got the Pumas. Fuck yeah, man. You did. Oh, I love it. Long you day, man. I can't wear fucking boots with these pants, man. You know, don't look right. You know what I mean? Hey, you got a question for you. Yeah, let's. So, I fit that 950 KTM in the back of a 98 Honda Odyssey. Oh my god. And that's the small. Is it here right now? No, I got it out. I want to see it. I wish. I could. I forgot to take a picture of it. I had to bring it back from Iowa. And I had to take the front, back, drop the handlebars from Iowa. All right, guys, we got the top off, got the tank out of the way. Um, quick, these things, uh, they pack the stuff in here so tight, really hard to get things out of the way. So anyway, um, I'm going to set this thing up for checking the valve by, I'm not going to bother taking the inspection cover off down there. I've just got a the cover off for the end of the crank and then we're going to rotate those um, cams so they're pointing up and out so they're not putting pressure on there it doesn't really matter if you're top dead screen. you just got to make sure you're at the base circle of the cam um, before you check well, guys i like to use these feeler gauges these are from uh, k and l uh, i got a bunch of different ones i've tried out the tusk ones are actually pretty good too but these are just the nicest i've used I, the size, shape, the angle of this is just really good. So we're going to check it at uh, check three thousandths. Because really, we should be looking between four and six thousandths on the intake, and like six and eight on the exhaust is a good kind of rule of thumb across the board. And the actual spec may be a fuzz different from that, but trust me, if you get it to that, you'll be fine. So uh, I'm going to start with three. Uh, see if that'll go. If that goes, we'll go four and up and, you know, whatever. I have a feeling the three is not even going to fit. And if the three doesn't fit, we'll go to a two. So everything's backwards on these Yamahas as the intake is that way. The intake is that way. The exhaust is this way. And actually, the cams go up and in. Um, it could be pressure off, not up and out. That's a doesn't matter as long as like I said you're on the base circle right. so three doesn't go there it's 
three doesn't go on that one. Let's check to see if a two will go. I'm kind of guessing now. Nope. Same on the left one. So now I'm going to go ahead and check the exhaust because my guess is they're probably okay. Check that with a six. Good. That one's good. All right, so exhaust valves are good. Intakes are not. So that means we're gonna have to shim these down. And since I can't put a two in there, we're gonna be guessing. I remember I made a video about this one time. It was like, you can't believe you're guessing. Well, if I can't put a feeler gauge in there to measure it, I have to guess. I have to just pick the ones that are out in there out. Choose. You know, I don't know, I usually go four or five sizes down, put it in there, and then recheck, and then I can get the right ones. Sometimes I get lucky, and that's the right one. Uh, a lot of times I don't, and then I gotta do the math and get the right ones. But yes, if you cannot put a feeler gauge in there, it is a guess. One thing I wish the Yamaha would do, the KTM does do, rarely do I say those words, uh, is build a lock for the motor so I can just lock it and, uh, know that it's the top dead center and when I put it back together, but they don't do that. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the way we uh, be real careful on one of these. Undo the cam chain first. Guys, seriously cannot say enough about grip mats. Link in the description for Toolbox Widget. Get yourself one of these, save some money if you use our code, Highland. I think it's our Highland 10. Um, I'm telling you, the, these are, of all the toolbox widget things, honestly, these are my favorite. All right, so cam chain tensioner, guys, you put a screw, I'll show you. Take the little cover, the 10 mil out, put a flat blade screwdriver in there, turn it till you feel it go into the thing, you turn it righty tighty, and that actually pulls the, the tensioner back, and then when it stops, you can just go, just a little bit and it'll stay there um, now we can take just this cap off since we know the exhausts are good we're just gonna take this cap off then we're going to take a zip tie and put it through one of these holes to the cam chain nice and tight hold it down and we're gonna pull the cam up and out of the way I'll show you what that looks like uh, here when I get it done um, and by the way I'm working on a camera I'm hoping it shows up soon uh, from Insta360, it's like a little lapel camera. It'll be close so I can do some POV stuff so you can, it's a little easier for me to do it. And I can, I can just, anyway, put it on my chest. I'm not gonna run a big chest rig from the Ace Pro, but the little Go 3, I think is what it's called. Hopefully that's on its way. All right, guys, so check it out. We got a zip tie. I think you can see, yeah, right there. And now we can just move this cam up and out of the way. Uh, this ECU does not like to stay out of the way. There we go. Uh, now you can see you get the buckets right there. The cam's out of the way. We know it's not going to skip time, so all we got to do is just shove it back in there. I'm going to grab a magnet and pop those two buckets out. Um, and like I said, I'm going to start guessing at sizes. I'm going to start with the right one. doesn't matter because they're both all the way tight. Generally, guys, when you pull them out with a magnet, the the shim is going to stay in the bucket. So just be careful uh, as you pull it out not to drop that thing down in there. It stays partially because the magnet, and then partially because it's uh, oil. Oh, and these seem kind of thin, so. No markings, so we're gonna have to measure it. So that's a 170. I'm gonna try five sizes down, which is a 140. Got the left one, also 170. 
going to go with a 145 sorry the other one was a 145 too not a 145 now guys put it all back together I'm going to uh, I do with cam cap when I'm checking because I might have to take them back out again to get these right is let's set the cam down in there and take cap and I'm just going to go one corner one corner with bolts and just snug them down to check because you can't check it like that just sitting in there because you don't have pressure on it uh, and you don't need to put them all in there to just check the thing so. all right now I'm going to go back in with a four thousand to start I know we just chopped a whole bunch of sizes and we'll check we'll start with the four thousandths because uh, that's the minimum and if that goes in nice and easy we'll go up to five basically i wish i could have you feel this through the camera guys but you're looking for just a tiny bit of drag you don't want it to slide through there super easy and obviously you don't want it to stop you want a little bit of drag to get the right all right do the right one four goes Left one, four goes. Let's see if we can get a five. All right, five's feeling pretty good on both of them. It's got a little bit of a drag to it. Let's see if a six will go. Six might make it. The left one, but I think that's going to be it. Again, that's the upper end of the spec, so. Yeah, the six does make it on the left one, and, and it's got good drag on it. Doesn't quite go to the right, so we're good. One's a five, one's a six, we're good. The shims are only in 0.01 of a millimeter, or excuse me, 0.05 of a millimeter uh, variable, so like, or increments, so it, you can't really get much closer than that with these shims now the factory has uh access to shims of every like 0.01 variation uh, but we don't we just have 0.05 from hot cans so we're good um now i'm gonna put all this back together torque those things to eight foot pounds seven foot, it's actually seven foot pounds um which is crazy important because only one side has a uh, bearing the other is just the cam riding in the aluminum on hard anodization so you don't want to over torque that or you'll wear that thing out and cost you a whole very expensive head so i'm gonna get that buttoned up and then we're gonna start working on the electrical uh real quick guys let me show you um so there's our zip tie clip that dude and now we're gonna take this flat blade we're gonna go in there find the home and then just release it there we go now everything is back to tight then to quadruple check our uh the nothing got out of time we're gonna rotate this thing over uh, full amount make sure we don't hit any uh pistons into valves all right, there we go. So we're good. Super simple, guys. Um, make sure you get this back in. Don't ask how I know that that will create a giant mess. Uh, it does not harm anything, but it makes a huge mess. All right, guys, so I got everything buttoned up. I was gonna check Spark, make sure I had everything hooked up correctly uh, from removing all that stuff, but watch this. Starter clutch is going south, which is kind of a problem on these uh, Yamahas, especially the 450s. We've replaced quite a few of them. Um, and it was kind of acting up before. I thought it would get better once we changed the oil and ran some miles on it and just got it all uh, done. But it got worse when I just added compression back to it um, by uh, putting those valves back to where they're supposed to be. Now it's got more compression, so now it's resisting that starter more. And here we go. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead with the electrical stuff and get that done so that uh, when I call this guy, I can tell him how fast it'll be done and all that. I just 
Uh, I feel terrible because it's like one thing after another on this bike. Um, but that is what happens sometimes when you buy a used motorcycle. It doesn't always, uh, you know, go like you hope. But we're getting it dialed in. It's going to be a really good bike when we're done. Um, looks like it's got 150 hours on it, at least by this clock, which is the Yamaha. I'm guessing someone put that on right when they got it, um, which isn't a terrible amount of hours. But depending on how it was taken care of, that could be high. Um, all right, I'm going to go grab all the headlight and taillight and all that stuff. And I'll bring you in kind of slowly but surely as I do it. It's not going to be some crazy thing. Um, I'm probably just going to run everything off the battery um, with the switch uh, on the bars to turn the lights on. Um, put a brake light switch on it and all that good stuff. And I'll show you kind of how I route it and all that stuff um, as I get closer to having it done. All right, guys. <clears throat> got the wiring all uh, done. It's not cleaned up, but it's done as far as making it work. Let me show you what I did. So I took power and ground from the battery up, ran uh, power to here, and I hooked both the stoplight and running light to the power. I got to tape that up. It's soldered. I'll tape that up. Anyway, so there's power going to the lights or to the tail light and the stop light uh, then I interrupted the power to the brake light or you know, the stop light I interrupted that power and went down to a brake light switch that's hooked up to the you know, hydraulic switch so that only sends power when it's uh, hot then I took the ground and I ran the ground um, I uh, I didn't have to but I wanted to kind of I don't know I it, my thought process was a little bit odd, but anyway, it works out. So I ran the ground up here, um, and then, uh, so this is the ground now, and I tied it into this ground. Sorry. This is the ground, so I tied it into up here, and then that goes up to this switch, and then when you connect it, it connects ground to uh, the headlight, and to the tail light so we turn it on so it's off right now on tail light comes on then we hit the brake brake light comes on it's all working good uh like i said so it's a switched ground not a switched hot on that but then this is a switched hot for the brake light so it's a little weird um honestly i was kind of like thinking through it and i just I did a few things first and had to kind of retrofit my thing. But anyway, it works great. And I tied power directly from the headlight to um, the battery. And like I said, it's a switched crown. Now, the next thing I have to do is I've got a key switch to wire um, to the kill switch so that um, when you take this key out, it is grounding the ignition and it won't run. And then when you turn it on, it disconnects it, and then that's the kill switch. So that's my next thing to do. And um, actually, the next thing to do is clean this all up and uh, wire loom it and make it nice and pretty and out of the way so it won't get rubbed or do anything weird. Then I'll work on that. All right, guys, we've got everything all done on this. Lights work. Brake light switch works. Oh, actually, one thing I... Okay, I've not actually done everything. I still need to do the... Oh... So no, I did get the kill switch done. Um, the key kill switch, it's all wired up. I think it's gonna be good, but I need to be able to start the bike to test to make sure it's good. And can't do that when this happens. Starter clutches, give it out. And this gentleman is already reeling a little bit from the price of what we've already done with all the service and the the street legal and stuff like that it was uh it was not a surprise but it, anyway it's a lot of money so um i'm gonna try to save him some money by doing a super duper trick um don't know if it's gonna work you guys are gonna see if we can make it work it's, it's, i filmed a video on this called the broke racer tip one of the broke racer tips this will fall into that realm if it works um but we are going to take the starter clutch out it's a sprag clutch and we're going to see if we can like dress it up and make it good and put it back in there and get a little more time out of it before he then has to replace it. He's going to have to replace it anyway, but 
maybe just maybe we can get them a little more time. So uh, what we're going to do, I was going to try to lay it on its side, but we got to take the got to get the coolant out and everything because it's uh, right in there. So I got to take the inner clutch cover off. So we're going to lift this thing up in the air, drain the coolant, drain the oil, pop all that stuff out <coughs> of the way. And uh, yeah, see if we can't make this thing work. All right, guys, I got to bring you in for something real fast. So I was taking everything apart. Uh, it's got a recluse in it, as you can see. I mean, it had a cover. Anyway, um, <clears throat> and as I'm taking it apart, I noticed something. Let's see, give you guys a second to look at that and guess before I keep going here. In fact, I'm just going to talk here for just a second while you guys guess in the comments below what you think is wrong. Um, obviously, you can just get past this, and I'm going to tell you, but it's more fun if you guess. All right, the tabs on the lock washer are not bent up and have never been up. So when this recluse got installed, that never got done. Um, now, is that like a catastrophic failure waiting to happen? Mm, not really, definitely end your ride, but uh, I have seen them come loose before and I don't think I've ever seen it really cause anything to blow up, but it's a super bummer because then the bike doesn't work right. Uh, anyway, gonna get this off, get the starter clutch out, and see if we can't fix this thing. All right, guys, we got the whole starter clutchy thing assembly removed. So the starter hits this, which then in turn turns this, which then spins uh, this this way, but not this way. And what's happening is it's slipping the other way, which I can't make it do because I can't hold it tight enough, but it's slipping. So. What we need to do is take this apart and leave these have there's washers right here guys don't lose those and don't get them out of place there we go and set that down like that and come in here this all looks happy and pretty <clears throat> it's a sprag clutch inside here so a couple things we can do first i'm going to rag one thing we can do is we can uh, try to kind of, don't want to lose these guys, rough this up. And it's got like a pretty shiny, it's got some marks on it from the sprag clutch, but so we can try to kind of cross hatch that basically and put a little bit of a tiny bit of roughness in it. So we'll do that for sure. Then let me show you what we're going to do here. Sweet. Now, and it's a bummer. You can't just replace just the clutch, which is what would be nice. So keep these things in order. There's a spring that goes around the outside of this. And what we can do, if we're real careful, we can take these all out. And we can tighten up that spring. I'll show you how. Maybe. There we go. Okay. So we want to try to keep them here. I'm going to try to keep them in the right orientation. The other thing is we are going to rough up this uh, surface where they fit in there. Take them apart. There we go. So this is our spring. and We need to put a little more tension on it now. What people don't always know is that these springs can come apart. Just gotta find the end where they go together. See, ooh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but probably not, but there's some, you can see some stretching right there. There we go. So unfortunately that one came out 
not like we want it, but I think I might have another one. All right, this is from another one that we've already replaced. There we go. All right, so that one is still intact. So what we do, we're gonna cut a little bit of that off. Go back together with it. All right. All right, guys. Amazingly enough, I got it back into position. <laughs> that is not easy, uh, but we got it. So now uh, I'm gonna clean everything up. We're gonna scuff all this stuff up with uh, this red scotch bright. The same thing I use for scuffing up fork tubes to put um, cross hatch in them. Okay, now we're going to see if we can pick this up carefully. Set it down. All right, now let's put this all back together and find out. Now this could have been a very tedious process for nothing. There's a pretty good chance of that. <laughs> um, but we're gonna give it a shot because I'd love to get this guy rolling and we can order this part and get it in here and plop it in. But uh, man, if I could get him rolling now, that'd be all super awesome. All right guys, we've got everything back together in here. All that needs to be done uh, for to see if this thing's gonna hook up and turn the motor over. And now, what we're going to do is, since my key switch thing is just a an interruption, or actually a connection in the kill switch, this bike will actually turn over with the kill switch depressed, because uh, what I don't want to do is accidentally um, have this thing start. It wouldn't be the end of the world as long as I shut it off really fast. I mean, there's no oil in it, no coolant in it, but if I got it off, I mean, no, no harm, no foul. But I don't want to deal with it and have oil go everywhere. So here we go. I have not done this. You might see my face get really sad or you see my face get really happy. Face happy. Okay, so at least we know it's going to turn over when it's dry. Let's see what happens when it gets a bunch of oil on it. I think we're going to be good at least for a while. We're definitely going to order the part um, because... That fix, I've done it a lot on KTMs. It's temporary. It's usually good for quite a while, but it's definitely temporary. So, um, yeah, I'm going to button this thing up, get oil back in it, and see if it actually fires up. All right, guys. We got it working. Everything seems good. Uh, now, a couple things you got to check. You got to see the battery is charging while the lights are on. So, we're going to grab our uh, voltmeter here. It's good. Turn our lights on. Dropped a little bit, but we're still over 13. We're still over 12 and a half. So, should be good. Dropping a little bit. Let's see what happens when we give it some gas. Alright. It goes up when we give it gas. That's good. The problem is this battery is weak, so um, it's got a little tester on it, and it says charge every time I hit it, even while the thing's running, so now, all right, uh, I think, like I said, battery seems weak, I did, like, when I first turned it over, I mean, the camera wasn't running, but it did fire right up right away, because it had, you know, the fuel line unhooked and all that stuff, it took a few cycles and whatever, it started to work, work, so I had to hook a jump pack to it, so that battery part needs to go away. Uh, but now let's check our install of the kill switch, or our key switch, I should say. I still haven't mounted it, but see if we turn it off. Aha! 
works. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, <laughs> so Zach is working on this lovely uh, example of a CRF-X. It's a 250? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, CRF-250X uh, has clearly been taken very good care of. Um, anyway, just jo joking. Uh, she's had a bit of a problem. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. You guys don't really show up on the camera, but the top end of that rod is definitely scored a bit. What else is going on? Is that what you're showing me? Not a cradle for this guy. It's about somebody broke that. Oh, off. So they well, that's, I mean, that's a new case, isn't it? Drill the hole through that and the little oh no and stuck a cotter pin through there no way <laughs> that's ingenious but now <laughs> we will not be <laughs> look at zach makes zach happy when things like that happen we will not be fixing that like that uh that's ingenious though if you're a backyard mechanic and you had to go racing and that i don't even know how you would break that though not 100% sure how that would happen, other than some catastrophic thing here, or the most ham-fisted individual ever. Um, <laughs> and you're dingusing this thing, so um, that's impressive. And how do you drill a hole through that? Like, I guess you could come in from out here without, I was just like, how the fuck? You like, take the whole thing apart, drill a hole through it. Well, we split the cases and we drilled a hole through it and then we put it back together. <laughs> yeah, no, that's new cases. He's, no, no. New cases, let's see, how bad is the top end? Top end surprisingly not that bad. It's not bad, but that's not great. Like those bearings have obviously spun in there at some point, or at least maybe not all the way spun, but. Cylinder, Cylinder looks great. Better than I thought it was gonna be. The boot was not. Ceiling. Oh, yeah. So yeah, the boot, car boot, would not ceiling, and then like I said, you can see some scoring in the rod. So I mean, obviously you're gonna have to take the crank out, get a new rod on it, or at least, or maybe a new crank, and then I guess new cases. The nice thing is, Honda. Quick fun fact for you guys: Honda is one of the very few companies that will sell you one case half. Most companies will have to sell you two uh, because they want to make sure they're matched and good. Honda trusts their machining enough that they will send you one case out. But you do have to give them your VIN and all kinds of stuff. They don't want people, I don't know, mixing and match. I'm not sure, but they, uh, yeah. So that's awesome. All right, guys, that's the end of the week, end of the slog. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've made it to this part of the video and you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do it. We're dangerously uh, close to 50,000 subscribers. Okay, we got a little ways to go, but we're getting there. We're getting really close. I want to hit 50. And then obviously the next giant goal is 100,000. I need your guys' help to do that. Uh, it is free to subscribe to this channel and it is free for you to tell your friends all about how rad this channel is. Uh, I get so many comments saying this is your favorite uh, dirt bike channel, all that stuff. Even if it's not your favorite dirt bike channel, maybe you know subscribe and tell other people too because I wanna make it even better and I can only do that with your help. So anyway, I love you guys. Use the links in the description. Buy from Rocky Mountain ATV if you cannot buy it locally. Shop local first, though. I keep forgetting to say that recently, but I want to make sure you guys know I want you to shop locally first. If you can't get it locally or you don't want to because you don't like the people there, then buy it from Rocky Mountain using our link. Anyway, I love you guys. We'll see you on the next one.